Hello darlings and welcome to the video. Today's video is going to be the last video reflecting on 2021. I was supposed to upload this video last week, but last week ended up being one of those weeks where like every single day something went wrong and it was also the 8th anniversary of my sister's death and it was just a heavy week. So I did not film that week and I think that was probably for the best. Back to today. Today we're going to be doing a poetry retrospective of last year. So we'll be looking at some of my most popular poems, my least popular poems, my personal favorite poems, and etc etc. I won't be reading all of these poems because that would take a very long time, but I might just pick out a few signature lines and read one or two of the poems. We'll just have to see how it goes as we roll along in the video. I will link all of the poems in the caption. These are all poems that were posted on Instagram. I'm only going to be doing the retrospective of poems I posted on Instagram because anything I haven't posted I'm probably saving for a book or it's just not finished. So it's only going to be finished pieces that I posted on Instagram. So they'll all be linked in the caption below. With that said, let's get started. Mm -hmm. my most popular poems on Instagram from 2021. Now I'm only doing this in like top three. I'm not going to go beyond that. The first like most popular piece was an after. Now, if you don't know what an after is, it's when you write something based on someone else's work. So you would see the title and then it would say after and usually the poet or if it's after a specific piece from a band or a play or something like that, it might be more specific. Now this piece is called Look Who's Inside Again after Bo Burnham. Now Bo Burnham is a comedian and he came out with a comedy special on Netflix last year and it was called Inside. And I watched it several times and it was really, really good. And I wrote an after to this piece. It is my most popular piece. It has 87 likes. I'm not super popular on Instagram, so don't expect any of these to be like 10,000 likes or something like that. Um, that's not my life. <laughs> but it has 87 likes and it got quite a few comments. And with this one, I'm going to read the whole piece since it was my most popular piece on Instagram. So, look who's inside again after Bo Burnham. Trying to write poetry while stuck in a room, blind shut, there's no way around it. Can one be poetic when stuck in a room? Daydream, make a paracosm out of it. Try writing haikus, try spilling out, gutting every word. Oh. I was a girl who was stuck in her room. Blind shut, there's no way around it. Now I'm a woman who's stuck in her room. Will this paracosm let me get out of it? Try writing haikus. Try spilling out, gutting every word. Well, well, look who's inside again. Went out to look for a reason to hide again. Well, well, darling, you found it. Now crawl back into bed. Fears got you surrounded. So, I try to be consistent with how he sings this song in the special. Um, and I think it like it is singable to the tune um, with only a few words being a little bit more difficult, like paracosm. But that was my most popular poem. On Instagram and I am not surprised considering how popular Inside was and still is. The next one is called Can I Keep You? So I wrote this one on a Zoom call with some other poets from Instagram. Uh, this was during Pride Month and that was kind of the theme of the Zoom call. A few lines stick out here for me. I like the, the line 
that I guess the whole song's that I found myself trapped in the idea of immortality, in the desire to gasp forever into your mouth. I really like that particular stanza in this, but I also enjoy the ending when I wrote, what I mean to say is, I'd give up the sun for an eternity with you, but your face belongs in her glowing rays, so human we remain. My third most popular poem on Instagram is one that we're gonna talk about more in depth later, but it's called The Self Implosion of Longing, AKA How You Crush Me. And now we're going into the least popular section. Okay, so least popular section. It's always a little, I think, sad to analyze your least popular poems uh, among the public, but I, I, I actually get why this was, these were not very popular. So the first one um, doesn't have a title, it's untitled, and it's very short. Uh, it only got like 24 likes and it was posted for Valentine's Day last year. And I'm trying to remember, but I think this might have been a, like a repost from a previous like poem that I posted years ago. But it's really short, so I'll read it. Idols fall, masks melt away, secrets become truths, and what remains are people, vulnerable and flawed, but still worthy of being loved. So as you can see, that's it's like more like just like a poetic sentence. There's not like a lot to it. So it's not like heartbreaking that it wasn't very popular. There have been a few times in the past where like I worked really hard on something and then no one read it and I was like, okay. And then like the next day I'd like post something I took five seconds on and then it was like super duper popular and I was like, what? <sighs> the frustrations. The next one is not a poem. So my least second least popular post was called Deleted Scene. It's, it's like a script. And I wrote it out like a script and it's like several pages, like slides long, I think like at least 10, I think it might be maxed out. And it was, um, I think this was in April and I think the prompt I was using was to write something with dialogue in it and then I ended up just writing an entire deleted scene. And it's inspired by my favorite TV show of all time, Supernatural, which ended in 2020. And I just wrote like this deleted scene about like the villain of the show. And, but I left it vague. So when people were reading it, they didn't have to understand that it was a part, like a supposed to be inspired by the show or anything like that. But it was really long. So I don't think a lot of people read it. And so it wasn't very popular, but I still really enjoyed writing that and um, the people who did read it and commented on it really liked it. So I, I appreciated those who took the time. The last one. So this last piece of my least popular poems is called Invitation, the Silent Downward Spiral of Social Anxiety. This poem is going to show up a lot in all of the negative categories. I do not like this poem, maybe at all. Um, this was one of those times when you write something and you post it, but then you realize later that maybe it should have just been a journal entry and maybe it shouldn't have been for the mass public kind of situation. But, you know, for those who did like it and comment on it, I appreciate that. My personal top three poems. This was very hard and because I didn't really want to do a, like a lot of repeats in the categories. Okay, so my number one top favorite poem that I wrote in 2021 is called This Just In, Stars Don't Make Me Small. It was very hard to pick a top one, but this is a top contender for many reasons. But I'm just gonna read it and you can tell me how y'all feel. This Justin, 
Stars don't make me feel small. All the philosophers say they should, that they're a reminder of how we are a speck of sand in the universe. My mind searches for proof. Rewind, play, pause. Rewind, play, pause. There have been times where I felt no bigger than an ant, but never were the stars at fault. I cannot count how many times words have cut me down like a rotten tree, or how many sets of hands have made me feel insignificant, frozen in place, powerless. I have only ever felt small under the heel of another human. The stars don't make me feel small. The light of their orbs glimmering in my eyes like a million eternities. How saying goodbye is like saying goodnight. How the sun is always there when I wake up, our brightest star. How I've grown beneath her as the flowers do. No, the stars don't make me feel small. They make me feel like my crimson blood glows neon under my skin. A gift given from their star stuff. I feel infinite under their gaze. How energy can never die. How maybe one day my light will illuminate the night with them. I think I really like this poem because first off, I really like writing about space and the stars and celestial stuff, but also I feel like I talk about in the poem how philosophers say this or that, but then I kind of am writing my own philosophy at the same time that contradicts that. And I just feel this poem when I read it again. It just sings to me and I just feel like it's a poem that is very connected to who I am as a person. And that is why it is one of my favorite pieces. The next poem is called An Ode to Sound in Silence. Now, I really enjoy this piece because first off, making an ode to sound in silence is pretty fun because you're, you're pretty much making an ode to two things that are the opposite of each other. I love the flow of this piece and how it kind of feels like it's going back and forth and you're talking about these two topics that are opposite of each other, but somehow all together it makes sense. I'm not going to read the whole thing because I know this video is already getting long, but I will read my favorite line from it. To the last good day and the last goodbye, to the sound of our breath at night and how it became just mine by morning, to the white noise of empty spaces and the echo of the people who used to occupy them. So that's the last two or three lines of the poem. And it's not necessarily the most eye-catching or imaginative lines. I mean, there's some good imagery up top. I just like the somberness of it. The poem is very much about going from love to breakup to, to having someone in your life to being without them for maybe even the rest of your life and that kind of transition and I like how the end signifies that these people are never really gone permanently even if you don't see them because they leave echoes and traces of themselves inside you and the last of my favorite pieces is Dendrochronology, which is basically the study of tree rings. Um, and this piece, not only did I like like the artwork I made for the piece, but it's also a witchy piece and it's like very woman empowerment. And I just like the feeling and the vibe and the environment of this piece. But I'm gonna read you the featured line that I had on the first slide. From Instagram. I think of all the women who share my tree, how they danced too in the holy woods beneath a godly sky, daughters of ash and bone, women of magic and earth. I, I love witches like most women these days and I love 
I love when, like, a, like a universal womanhood kind of vibe, like women coming together, this kind of universal coven. I like women standing up for each other. I like the idea of this magic that resides inside of us from just from birth, from just being a woman, and also from our experiences and our traumas and how we we thrive despite them. To be clear, um, when I say, you know, like just being born how we are, you know, trans women are women too, and they obviously, they count in this scenario. All women should come together and support each other, no matter what our differences is, are. And I don't know, that I just like that idea of just women coming together and supporting each other and using our magic to create and build up the world. Next category is my least favorite poem of 2021. Once again, that's Invitation, The Silent Downward Spiral of Social Anxiety. I'm not even going to talk about it anymore. We already talked about it and I'm not going to read anything from it. It's just, it's not worth it. The next category is the weirdest poem I wrote in 2021. I have two contenders for this. One is called Obit after Victoria Chang. And that's pretty much when you like write a obituary for yourself. But I decided instead to write an obituary for part of myself. And pretty much I chose to write the obituary about perfection and striving to be perfect. Um, and I liked how I laid this out for Instagram. I made it look like it's a news article. And the featured line is, she sets herself up to fall even in death. And then the next poem is called Fragments of You. This was a fun one to write because it was pretty much me pairing like one or two lines with like a series of haikus throughout it. And the way that I formatted it for Instagram is very fragmented. So yeah, that's all I'm pretty much gonna say about that one. It was just, it was a lot of fun, but it was also, I guess, weird in a way. Like it's hard to like def decide what is a weird poem, but the next category is the poems I'm most proud of. One and two, which are the private letters of a bi girl. Now I wrote like two sections for this, like two different poems that it goes into a series. And pretty much last year was the first time I really started to write about being bisexual and some of the experiences I've had as a bisexual woman and as a girl. So. I felt very proud to be really writing about that for the first time um, in a way that's obvious and not like secretive and it's just very cathartic. The next one is called What's the Deal with Men After Lord Birthday on Instagram and this one is pretty much talking about violence against women. This is a piece that I'm pretty proud of. It's a heavier piece. It, like I said, it is about violence against women. It's about how often I turn on the news and hear about a woman being sexually assaulted, being murdered, disappearing, being kidnapped. And it's about how you try to protect yourself and you try to hide, you try to fight, you try to run, but it feels inescapable. I'll read one line from this one. I wonder if there is some place beyond the earth or a dimension out of reach where women are heard, where women are safe, where women are free. Um, that's all I'm going to read of this one right now. I might do a whole video for this one and just read the whole thing. It is one that 
I am very proud of. The last poem under this section of poems I'm very proud of is called There's a Voice Inside My Head. This poem really talks about my anxiety, um, how having any type of mental illness, you feel like you have a constant battle inside of you. And it can be very hard to talk about and write about sometimes because you wonder what people are going to think of you. But I was, I'm very proud of the piece. It's a long one, so I'm not going to read it. But if you are interested in it, like I said, everything will be linked below in the caption. The next category is the poem I cringe at when I see. And if you're thinking, I know what this one is, I know what it's going to be, you're probably right. Because it's invitation, the silent downward spiral of social anxiety. And that's all we're going to say about it. Because it's bad. <laughs> and the last section is the poem where I can see the most improvement in my writing. Now here... I have four poems, um, and some of them I've talked about before. All of these poems are on the list because I could see an improvement in imagery, structure, and voice, using my own voice more. And I love all of these pieces. Some of them are really long, and this video is already getting long, so I can't really read all of them, but I will read my favorite line from each one. Okay, starting from the top, um, there is a voice in my head. So, when I say line, sometimes it ends up being two or three so that it makes sense. The voice in my head is a liar. A scared little girl disguised as a monster, painted in black goo and blood. She is all hands, reaching out for stability and comfort. She is 100 million eyes, looking to the past and future, but blind to the present. She is one mouth, not large and razor filled, small, but consistent and invisible to the eyes, a ghost haunting all the same. So that's my favorite few lines from There's a Voice in My Head. It's a much larger poem. Um, I mean, it's not like an epic poem or anything, but there, there's several other stances to it. And I already discussed it before, so I will not go any further into it. Next is the self implosion of longing, AKA how you crush me. This one's fun because it starts with me giving my own definition of the word crush, and then it goes into the poem. I'm just gonna read the beginning, which is my definition of the word crush. Crush. The thought of your glistening lips on mine, pinning me to the ocean floor, the pressure distorting my shape, how willing I am to be pancaked in the pit of her big, blue, beautiful belly, if it means I get to taste your kiss. So that's just the opening. I really like this piece. It's really rich in imagery and is just a really... I don't, wanna, I don't know really if I'd call it a love poem as much as it is about longing for someone, but I think it's a really good poem about longing and I really love it. The next poem is Hive Mind. So I'm going to be reading the very last line of Hive Mind. Or I'll read the last two so it might make more sense. To have the buzz of a colony of queens reverberating through your bones, the vibrating hum of communion, of learning to be unafraid of what it means to burn your honey, to let your sweet melt tongues. So Hive Mind is a poem that I really love specifically for the imagery and where I just felt a shift in my use of imagery. And the next poem is like that too. The next poem is Our Love as a Clementine. It's a short one, so I'll just read the whole piece. Our Love as a Clementine. You thrive off vitamin C, and I on your clementine. You peel me open slowly, fingers love-stained, sticky sweet tang, my bliss in the air. 
competing with bird songs. My branches shiver. You zip me back up. Kiss me as I put on the kettle. Your touch always ten times warmer than mine. My skin sunset painted in your embrace. Well, darlings, that's it for today's video. If you liked this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notifications. Don't forget to tippity tap in the comments below to tell me what you thought of this video and what you would like to see on my channel. If you made it this far, please remember to pick up your bonus points here. And always remember to rise from your ashes, darlings. Until next time, bye. I'm going to try to example. Mm.